Meet Hazel, the 1961 TV series that became a household favorite. With its simple charm and relatable characters, it quickly found its way into the hearts of viewers. As you delve into the episodes, you'll encounter a roller coaster of emotions funny, shocking, and even a bit sad. So keep your eyes glued to the screen. The show boasts a diverse cast, each playing a unique role. Out of the many characters, which one became your instant favorite? Was it the quirky maid, the lovable kids, or someone else stealing the spotlight? Now, as you reminisce about Hazel's world, we're curious to know your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the series. Share your stories and reflections in the comments below. We'd love to hear them. So, who was your standout character, and what's your special connection to Hazel? Drop your thoughts, memories, and anecdotes below, and let's celebrate the timeless appeal of this classic TV gem. Step back to 1961, a year when the beloved TV series, Hazel, emerged. Imagine families nationwide gathered around their television sets, eagerly anticipating the next episode of this engaging show. What made Hazel stand out during that time? Hazel wasn't just another series, it was a show that left a lasting impression on viewers. Its simple charm and relatable characters provided a breath of fresh air in the early 60s TV scene. The show's importance lies not only in its entertainment value, but also in its ability to connect with the audience on a personal level. As you watch the episodes, you'll experience a range of emotions moments that are funny, surprising, and even heartwarming. The diverse cast, each playing a unique role, added to the show's versatility. Whether it was the quirky maid, the lovable kids, or another character stealing the spotlight, viewers found someone relatable in Hazel's world. Now, let's reminisce about those standout characters. Who captured your heart instantly? What's your special connection to the show? Share your thoughts, memories, and anecdotes in the comments below. Let's celebrate the timeless appeal of this classic TV gem together, weaving a fabric of shared experiences that make Hazel a cherished part of TV history. In conclusion, Hazel isn't just a show. It's a reminder of the lasting power of storytelling that transcends generations. So let the memories flow and the stories unfold, honoring the impact Hazel has had on our cultural history. Whitney Blake, known for her role as Dorothy Baxter in the 1961 TV series, was married to a man named Baxter in real life. The couple had three children, one of whom was Meredith Baxter. Following her mother's footsteps, Meredith later starred in the 80s sitcom Family Ties, playing the mother of Michael J. Fox's character. The theme song of the series underwent a change in presentation. Initially, the vocal version played during the end credits of the first eight episodes. However, from episode 9 until the series' end, the theme was exclusively instrumental. Bobby Buntrock, who played the lone child character on Hazel, left a unique legacy. After the show, he made appearances in two episodes of The Virginian in 1967. Tragically, seven years later, Buntrock passed away in a car accident in South Dakota at the age of 21. The factual details around the lives of the cast and the shift in the show's theme song presentation add layers to the overall narrative of the series, revealing interesting aspects beyond the on-screen storyline. The Baxter family, central to the 1961 TV series, shares a unique connection with Whitney Blake's personal life. The family name Baxter was also that of Blake's first husband and the father of her real-life daughter, Meredith Baxter. This subtle familial link adds an interesting layer to the show's narrative. A distinctive visual element in the opening credits features Hazel passing groceries to the Baxter family. While the camera focuses on Dorothy Baxter, a church beyond the trees catches the viewer's eye. The church, situated across from the Stephen House, faced a major setback in 1970 due to a fire at the Columbia Ranch. Although the original church was leveled, Columbia Studios reconstructed a new one. Interestingly, during the show's scenes where the Baxters and Hazel walk away from a red convertible, the rebuilt church isn't immediately apparent. It's positioned in the distance, a reconstruction that is subtly observed. The current state of the location, as seen on Google Maps, shows changes, notably the absence of a tree that once stood behind Mr. Baxter's red convertible. In a linguistic shift, Hazel's first name becomes Adele when spoken in French, aligning with the series' title in the same language. This linguistic variation adds a touch of cultural nuance to the character's identity. These details, ranging from familial connections to the changing surroundings around the filming location, enrich the understanding of the show's context. 
The subtle intricacies of Adele's world extend beyond the on-screen storyline, offering viewers glimpses into the lives of those involved in its production. Hazel originated from Ted Key's cartoons in the Saturday Evening Post magazine. It holds the distinction of being the inaugural color broadcast situation comedy. The first monochrome season, spanning from fall 1961 to spring 1962, transitioned to color in autumn 1962 for the subsequent four seasons. Notably, the show's exterior, the Baxter residence, doubled as the Murtaugh's home in the Lethal Weapon films. Whitney Blake, portraying Dorothy Baxter, had a real-life connection to the family name shared with her first husband and daughter Meredith Baxter. A notable shift in the series' theme song presentation occurred after the initial eight episodes, transitioning from vocal to instrumental. Bobby Buntrock, the young actor playing the sole child character, left a lasting impact with appearances in later shows and a tragic end at 21 in a car accident. The opening credits offer visual nuances, such as the church scene and changes in the Columbia Ranch location. A reconstructed church emerged after a fire in 1970, subtly observed in scenes featuring the Baxters and Hazel near a red convertible. Linguistically, Hazel's name becomes Adele in French, adding a cultural touch to her character. These details, from familial ties to evolving filming locations, provide an enriched understanding of the show's context. The house where Hazel created her antics alongside the Baxters gained attention beyond the show. Located on Blondie Street at Warner Ranch in Burbank, it appeared in various productions, hosting different on-screen families. Notably, it was the home of Gidget Lawrence and her father in the 1965 sitcom Gidget and served as the residence for Anne Margaret and her father in the 1963 musical Bye Bye Birdie. The house also appeared in the Lethal Weapon movies as Roger Murtaugh's home. This residential set featured homes from various TV shows, creating a nostalgic backdrop for TV moments. In 1998, the movie Pleasantville further immortalized this fake neighborhood, depicting an idealized TV setting. In the storyline, George's legal work was based at the law firm Butterworth, Noel, Hatch, and Baxter. This professional setting added complexity to George Baxter's character by connecting his personal and professional life the law firm became an important element in shaping the dynamics of the show. Looking at the opening credits, there was an interesting evolution. The introductory song changed, leading to Whitney Blake's appearance with a flamboyant style. This unexplained change in the opening credits added a unique aspect to the viewing experience, making audiences wonder about the reasons behind this distinctive choice. Summing up, the house's various roles, George's legal connection, and the evolving opening credits create a detailed picture of Hazel going beyond a simple sitcom and becoming a part of TV history. Shirley Booth, known for her role as the central character, later provided her voice for Mrs. Santa Claus in the 1974 film The Year Without a Santa Claus. Transitioning from Hazel's lovable persona, she embraced a festive role that resonated with audiences. Exploring Hazel's background, she held a unique position as the president of the Sunshine Girls, a sorority of maids. This added a sense of camaraderie and solidarity among the domestic characters, giving the show a distinctive touch. Notably, Ford Motor Company's sponsorship during the initial four seasons had an impact on the show, ensuring that the Baxter family's cars were exclusively Ford's. The series embraced innovation, featuring the newly introduced Ford Mustang in the spring of 1964, setting a trend as one of the first shows to showcase this popular vehicle. In Hazel's narrative, Whitney Blake's character, Dorothy Baxter, shares more than a fictional connection. The Baxter family name mirrored Blake's real-life ties, adding a subtle familial nuance to the show's fabric. Such personal touches go beyond the screen, creating a relatable thread for the audience. Practical details extend beyond the cast dynamics. The series' theme song underwent a shift, transitioning from a vocal version to an exclusively instrumental presentation after the initial eight episodes. This change, though subtle, marked a notable evolution in the show's auditory identity. Bobby Buntrock, the young actor who brought life to the lone child character, left a lasting legacy. Beyond Hazel, he made appearances in subsequent shows, but met a tragic end at the age of 21 in a car accident in South Dakota. His brief yet impactful contribution to television is a somber note in the show's history. The setting of Hazel's world, including the house on Blondie Street at Warner Ranch in Burbank, became a symbol beyond the show. 
It served as the backdrop for various productions, immortalizing the fictional neighborhood in the history of television. The house, appearing in diverse roles, stands as a reminder of the nostalgia and continuity of TV settings over the years. In a linguistic twist, Hazel's name transforms into Adele when spoken in French, injecting a touch of cultural nuance into the character's identity. These subtle nuances, from linguistic shifts to familial ties, enrich the understanding of the show's context, revealing the layers beneath its seemingly straightforward surface.